Hello, I'm Dr. Margaret Matthews. I'm with the Division of Geriatrics at Prisma Health Senior Primary Care, and I'm here to talk to you about active aging. Boomers, you're peaking this year. It turns out that if you were born in 1957, you're the most populous, populous year of the baby boom, and you're turning 65 this year. And you're joining this illustrious class of baby boomers entering Medicare this year. And I'm sure you're really excited. I am too. It'll be a couple years for me, but I'm just right behind you. But I have good news. It's time to upsize. Uh, unfortunately, not necessarily to this 1957 mid-century Beverly Hills mansion, but it is time to upsize your senior health goals. So let's team up today and talk a little bit about active aging. Ah, oh, I'm tired. You're experiencing pain at the tail end, he says. So what makes you think it's almost over? The bottom line here is that it isn't almost over. Probably you will live at least into your mid 80s if you're 65 this year. And so you have to prepare for the long haul. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about how you might do that. Because the last thing boomers want is to get into their 80s and be disabled in pain and dependent. They want to be vital. They want to be healthy. They want to have fun. So let's move along. Uh, as you know, we will age. We will get sh shorter. We will get a little bit more dependent as we age. But in geriatrics, what we want to try to focus on is extending your function as you get into your 80s and even into your 90s if you live that long and compressing that very short amount at the end we call that live long, die short. And good health and function always starts with preventative care. So you're gonna team up with a good primary care professional and get going. So we have all kinds of health screenings that you're familiar with that we do every year at every age. And this is not uh, shrinking as you get older. We continue to do screenings for cancers, screening for your blood pressure, your lipids, your blood sugars, osteoporosis, and then there's vaccinations. One-time vaccinations, annual vaccinations. We've added COVID here now this year. Also hepatitis C screening for baby boomers. And let's not forget about our dental health, which is so important to our overall health at every age. Let me switch gears and talk about my medical home, which is Prisma Health Senior Primary Care. This is a 25-year-old practice in the Division of Geriatrics. It's a teaching um, practice. We have fellows and residents. We have a team-based approach to help our patients with their often complex care needs. This involves geriatric-trained physicians as well as a nurse practitioner, a pharmacist, social workers, nurses, and other team members to help do the best at taking care of their primary care needs and their complex psychosocial needs as well. At any age, though, as you are in the aging spectrum, we focus on maximizing health by maximizing function. I'm gonna talk a little bit about a framework that I love in geriatrics, and that's called the five M's, and it stands for mind. That's your memory and your mood. Second is your mobility. That's your ability to get things done physically at home, prevent your falls. Then your medications, that's doing a great assessment of your medications, making sure that they're, uh, they're accurate, that they're working, that they're not causing adverse events. What matters most to you, that's your health goals. This would be like your um, living will, um, planning for future needs, uh, what you expect out of yourself and out of your care team. And then we have multi-complexity. And multi-complexity is how all those needs interact together, and it includes your chronic medical diseases. And it makes a nice heart, because we love our senior patients. So let's talk about the thing that worries most of us boomers, and I'm one of them. You start to be forgetful, you worry about your brain aging, and this can really get us to talk about some of these other five Ms. So aging brain health, the good news is our brain is actually the organ in the human body that ages the slowest, but we haven't caught up to the evolutionary idea of living into our 90s and 100. 
So we need to do things to help our brain age slightly more slowly. So we talk about risk factors and we talk about protective factors. And here's our list of risk factors. And you can read them, smoking, blood pressure, blood sugar, toxins, sitting, depression and stress, hearing loss and obesity. Protective factors are education, exercise, heart healthy diets, social engagement, cognitive activity, good sleep habits, replacement of vitamins and calorie restriction or keeping your BMI low. If I were to give one pill for the brain, it would be exercise. It wouldn't be a pill at all. And that's because exercise is so great at increasing our blood flow in our brain and it helps with increasing neural pathway connectivity and it helps us think better, plan better, it helps our mood. And that's not even to talk about what it does for our physical fitness in our bodies. It helps reduce fall prevention, it helps prevent cancers and osteoporosis and a host of other good things. Here's a little slide about exercise and what it does for your uh, metabolic activity in your brain. So 20 minutes walk is all it takes to get your brain going and exercise that brain compared to sitting. So you've got to get up and move. It's really good for your health. It's great for your brain. And you could do it in so many fun ways and it can increase your social life and it can increase all kinds of aspects of your fun as you age. It's important to mix it up, to have a diversity of exercise. Uh, each different kinds of exercise can help um, really build the strength and uh, reserve of many different areas of your brain. So exercise recommendations. Do I really need to exercise, Dr. Matthews? I really don't enjoy it. And I say, well, physical activity can help your brain, just the usual activities like cleaning, shopping, gardening. But you do need to pay attention to how much you get and how you reduce your sitting time. So at least 7,000 steps a day. Aerobic exercise is really important. It gets that blood flow going and it needs to be about 150 minutes per week. And that can be a very vigorous paced walking where you don't have the ability to talk while you walk, swimming, jogging, or a host of other things. Strength is important. It also improves our cognition, 30 minutes, two to three days a week. Balance and flexibility will help us with our fall prevention. Let's switch gears and talk about diet. This is the Mediterranean diet. You've heard about this. This is what it takes to keep a brain and body healthy. It doesn't look like our typical sad standard American diet though. And it doesn't look like Olive Garden. It's a Mediterranean diet is a very high um, plant-based diet, rich in phytonutrients, as well as healthy fats from fish, from olive oil, from avocados, from walnuts, chia seeds. Um, and it includes a much lower amount of any red meat and no processed foods. Here's an idea about how you need to proportion these different nutrients. You want to be heavy on the vegetables and fruits, then the healthy fats and high fiber grains, fish, a little bit of dairy is fine, eggs, and then a very low amount of pork and red meat. And then every now and then you might cheat and have a little dessert, but we really like to try to stay away from the processed foods. But that's not so much fun, Dr. Matthews. I cannot see tailgating with this Mediterranean diet. But you can still do things for your health that are fun and you can make what doesn't seem fun a habit and it can be fun. So socialization is great fun. You get together with your friends, play games, worship services, getting together with your family are all great for your brain. They help your mood, they help your body stay invigorated, they put you out there and it's one of the unsung tragedies of the COVID pandemic where we've been isolated for two years and it's been especially hard on our seniors who've been the highest risk for problems. Cognitive activities have shown to be really important for your brain, but you can't just do the same thing every day, day in and day out. I mean, it's fine to do crossword puzzle every day if you enjoy that. Uh, get out of your comfort zone and try to learn something new. Medications can be a risk to your brain. In general, we want to be really careful with what we prescribe and how we take our medications. You wanna bring your medicines to every doctor's visit or a very accurate list of your medications so they can check them over. 
you want to try to make sure that those medicines are um, used correctly and you want to make sure that they are not causing adverse effects and that they're necessary. You want to keep them organized and we're all here at Senior Primary Care to help you with that uh, and we spend a lot of time on medications at our office. So what matters to you? And you got to decide this. So this is really all about you, as health always is all about you. You need to plan for changes in your life as you age, because you could change. You could lose some function. You might be alone. Um, you might lose a spouse. You need to ha have a living will. You need to have a will. You need to plan for some changes. Where am I gonna live in 10 years? Am I gonna stay in my big house? Am I gonna downsize to a, to a senior area? Um, or am I gonna upsize to that mid-century modern? That would be great. Um, and then you have to make goals specifically about what's important to you because sometimes challenging decisions come up where you have to choose between functioning for a shorter time and better functional health and living shorter. So for instance, within a terminal cancer situation where you just wanna dance at your granddaughter's wedding. So in summary, it is time to upsize your senior health goals because you could live a long time and we want that to be healthy, happy aging. So get together with a primary care professional at Prisma Health and we'll see you soon. Thank you.